The launch of Ryzen 3000 came with several other key advancements, including the release of the X570 motherboards, which came with several new and interesting features. But as much as it's a scandal right now on whether or not AMD will actually remove stuff like PCIe Gen 4 compatibility from older motherboards or not, I'm going to leave all of that out of this video because today we are focusing on just reviewing one of them, my one in particular, which I thought is probably my best choice of a motherboard the Aorus X570 Elite, which is the cheapest Aorus option for X570. So we'll see if that means that it's bad or if it's actually a great deal for the price. Let's talk about aesthetics first, because for many people, that is a key thing when buying brand new PC components. And well, even though I don't have too much experience hands-on with more modern hardware, I gotta say it looks pretty decent. Now, I have a really specific taste when it comes to hardware and i have to say this ticks many of my favorite points of the pcb isn't super covered in plastic shrouds and stuff like that unlike the more high-end aos motherboards in which you can barely even see the pcb there is a nice touch of rgb which can be configured using gigabytes rgb fusion software and there's even other little details like having a nice barrier line showing the separation between the audio components and the rest of the motherboard. And for as much as I find a team up fight on message on my motherboard a bit cheesy, it's really small and not that distracting thankfully. But I know there's a lot of people who are really into that kind of stuff so that's there for you. But appearance is only one small fragment of a motherboard. Let's start with the big one for X570, PCIe 4.0. Now, sadly, I don't have my Aorus PCIe Gen 4 NVMe yet to test, but the motherboard comes with two PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots and also one normal PCIe X16 Gen 4 slot. That last one will probably not matter for you, but it's a nice bit of future proofing. But speaking of future proofing, one really weird thing I've noticed, especially seeing how it's been something that was present even in cheaper X470 motherboards, is a lack of a rear I.O. USB Type-C. Now, there is an internal USB Type-C header, which can be good, but for many of us, such as myself, who have more, let's just say, a legacy PC case, that doesn't really help, because, well, I don't have a USB Type-C port right on the front of the case. Another feature that Aorus really, really promotes when it comes to these motherboards is the inclusion of what they're calling Smart Fan 5, and says it's a much smarter way of controlling fan speeds depending on temperatures and stuff like that. In theory, it sounds rather decent, and it is actually rather good at adjusting fan speeds when needed, for the most part. But I've noticed some really weird behavior where the fans start speeding up really fast when I'm just plugging in a USB device or I'm closing a tab in Windows. It's extremely weird the kind of things that can trigger ridiculously high fan speeds like ones you would see when you're running a stress test. Now let's get into something that is one of the biggest things for Aorus this time around and that's power. Aorus went from having some of the worst power delivery options in previous generations of AMD motherboards to having some of the best, with this one having 12 plus 2 digital power and one 8-pin EPS connector. So that means you're pretty much sorted when it comes to Ryzen 7 CPUs, but Ryzen 9 may be a tiny bit of a stretch for this kind of motherboard. Another nice touch is that the motherboard comes with a CD with all sorts of useful stuff, not only the drivers and other gigabyte software, but other things you would usually install when getting a brand new PC to just Google Chrome and CPU-Z. So that's pretty much all you have to know about this motherboard. Now we're just left with the question of should you get it? Seeing how you pretty much don't need anything better than this for a Ryzen 7 or below CPU, then it is rather great. But I definitely wouldn't buy it if you're still running a second gen Ryzen for example. But I gotta say that compared to many other motherboards this generation, this is pretty much all you need. Others are ridiculously expensive for pretty much no reason. So that's pretty much all I have to say about it. But now it's time for me to thank my patrons. Barry Yule, Dante James Falzone, and Kryken. Thank you all so, so much for supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot and allows me to make way more interesting and weird videos. And if you want to support my channel to allow me to make that kind of stuff along with improving the quality of my videos, then I highly recommend checking out my Patreon. It's down in the video description below. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, whatever. And I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.